let's say together Jesus I am here today my heart is open my heart is open I am ready I am ready speak to me Lord Jesus speak to me Lord Jesus my faith is released my faith is released to receive from you to receive from you to retain from you to retain from you and to release in the days to come and to release in the days to come in Jesus name in Jesus name amen praise God hallelujah don't look at me let's look at jesus i believe he has a word for me and for you all this morning amen i have a song in my heart um god always speaks to me a lot in songs um i think that was why i was previously in the worship team and join me to sing this song as i come into your presence past the gates of praise into your sanctuary till we are standing face to face i look upon your countenance and see the fullness of your grace and i can only bow down and say sing with me this morning you are awesome in this place mighty god you are awesome in this place abba father you are worthy of all praise to you our lives we raise you are awesome in this place mighty god one more time you were awesome lord you are awesome in this place mighty god you are awesome you are awesome in this place Abba Father, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Praise the Lord. He's awesome in this place. He's awesome in your life. So open your heart and be ready this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. Who remembers? I'm sure we all remember. What have we been looking at for the past three weeks now? What about the kingdom? What is it? What's the topic of our learning what has God been saying to us for the past three weeks anyone pardon living supernaturally wow it's called the supernatural life of the kingdom the supernatural life of the kingdom this just tells me that many of us need to go listen to it the, the um, previous services are available on YouTube. Please listen to it to build your faith. Because this topic we've been looking at is life transforming. It's been changing my life. It's been transforming my life. And I believe it will do to yours as well. Amen? Well, today we'll continue our study or our topic on the supernatural life of the kingdom. And I'm going to backtrack a bit. I'm going to backtrack and I'll share my encounter with the kingdom of God. I've had few encounters with the kingdom. But this one, this encounter was so profound. Um, it set me on a different course. As many of you know, um, dad and mom, are my dad and mom. So they took us everywhere. Bible study, we were there. 
prayer meeting, we were there. After church service, how many of us recall, if you grew up in church, you wait and wait and wait. Mommy, mommy is talking. You're in the car, you're hungry. Oh, I want to go home. When will this end? We went everywhere. We came to Australia. I went through high school. And from young, I believe um, God gave my dad and I picked up, the Lord blessed me with that trait. I love to read. I have books, like my phone, you know, lots of books. So I love to read. And when I got into high school, this was back in Nigeria, Satan saw that seed and said, hmm, this girl likes to read. How can I corrupt it? He introduced me to romance novels. Ah, and me being a voracious reader, I had suppliers. I had two people that used to supply me. And because, you know, girls, I was in a boarding school. So girls hostel, um, they had girls lined up to borrow books. So you, in the list or in the lineup, perhaps I was number 50. So I used to go and meet this girl. I don't know where she got the books from. I think she used to steal it. Because she came to school with... For, uh, many of us from Africa, we know Ghana must go, right? The big Ghana must go bags, she'll fill it up with romance novels. Where did you get it from? She said, oh yeah, I just got it. I just, but in hindsight, I think she used to steal, <laughs> she used to steal those books. So what I used to do, and because she, you know, if you're in boarding school in Nigeria, there's hierarchy. If you're in JSS 1 or JSS 2, you are lower than those in SS1 and SS2. So everybody knew her as the supplier of romance novels. So the seniors as well, they would just come and go, okay, they'll take all the books. But me, what I used to do, I'll go to her, I'll say, I'll say give me the book at 12 midnight. And by 5 a.m., I will have finished it. So she liked me because number one, I used to return her books. And number two, I was quick. So sometimes she'll give me two books and I'll finish it. I won't sleep. I'll, and you know, back in Africa, there is no light. So I'll have candle or torchlight. And I'll shine it. Everybody will be sleeping. I'll be reading and reading and reading. She liked me so much. In the morning, I'll be like, I'm done. Here's your book. And she's like, wow. And next time when I go to her, guess what? She'll give me the books. So that's how we started. And then we came to Australia. We got laptops. We got library, we have the library, and guess what? Those books were at your fingertips. You, I could download, you go online and download those books. That was how voracious I was. And Satan is so subtle. Romance novels then, how many of us know they're not the same now? Now they're basically porn on paper. So guys, you know, young boys, they watch porn on TV. For ladies, it's in books because men, we all know, you know, psychology, biology, women are affected by what they what? Hear or what they read. Guys are visual. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, but that is general. So I devoured those books. And, and during this time, I was in church. I was in the worship team. Every Sunday, I'll come and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you. And then I'll go home and I'll read my romance novels. And then sometimes, you know, you'll be praying because how many of us know dad is a spiritual man? So you'll be praying that when he preaches, he does not see anything in that line. Because <laughs> sometimes you'll say something in that line and I'll, be, I'll feel the, you know, my spirit will convict me. I'll say, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. But my flesh liked it. And I'd fed my flesh to the extent that my flesh became so strong, my spirit would be like, I want to change. Lord, I, I must have repented almost 500 times or more. I can't even remember. But then the draw of the flesh will go again. Ooh. In my room with my Gilson College Apple laptop, I'm still an Apple fan. You can't change my mind. <laughs> my husband has tried. He can't. And I'll read and I'll read. I got into university, I'll read. I was born again, but the kingdom was not at work in my life. I was in church, 
But the power of God was not at work in my life. The Lordship of Jesus was not reigning in my life. And guess what? How many of us know when you indulge the flesh, what happens? You open the door to Satan. And he comes in. It doesn't matter if you grew up in a pastor's house. If you open the door, he will afflict you. He came into my life. Torment. I used to see things when I closed my eyes. When I sleep, I used to feel someone choking me. I wake up feeling like I'm almost choking, like someone is pressing on my chest regularly. And then worst of all, I got this itching condition where if I go out, we all know Melbourne is humid. I didn't know Melbourne was humid until we returned back from Canada. Melbourne is actually quite humid. And then I'll go out, no rain, no nothing, I'll break out in itching. And there was no reaction on my skin. If water mistakenly touches my skin, I will itch and itch and itch. Oh, gosh. We went to the doctors here. Doctors said, sorry, um, you know, we'll prescribe you with um, antihistamines. I'll take it, it will suppress it. But how many of us know the drug wears out? After it wears out, it comes again in full force. And I thought to myself, I can't be taking this medication because over time, I'm still young. It will destroy my liver. But I was still reading the book because my flesh liked it. And you know, uh, I'm a romantic, so <laughs> I like those stories, those happy endings. Of course, with the with the naughty bits in the middle, I would just, you know, Lord understands. But the ending is so cute that that was me. And then I will each and each and each. Backtrack to 2006. It first came, daddy prayed for me, it went. The itching didn't come again for years until Satan had been, you know, plying me, plying me. I'd been yielding, yielding until the door was wide open. Then he came in and sat down. Guess what? Daddy prayed for me. Guess what happened? Did you think he went? Why is that? The door is what? Wide open. It got to a point in my life. I graduated from university, um, applying for jobs. No job. No job. I went, oh. How many of us that have gone through that, you know, it's quite demoralizing. You apply, rejection, 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 rejection. So during that period, my uncle from Canada came and said, you know what, come to Canada, have a break. And I went to Canada and that was also a whole cost correction on its own story for another day. At that time, I said, okay, Lord, let me make a negotiation. I will read the romance novel, but I will skip the naughty bit. I mean, I'm only here for the story, right? I'm here for the vibes, good vibes. <laughs> I'm only here for the romance. I'll just skip the naughty bit. Guess what? I was still battling with the what? I was praying, nothing was happening. Then one day I got on my bed. After one morning, I was itching profusely. Water, you know, you know your morning routine. I showered and all of that, and I was itching so badly. I was crying, and it just dawned on me: this is torment, torment. And I, and I, and I told myself, I was like, okay, I can't continue like this. I can't go out, and then if I see if the weather is um, humid, I have to run back because. Imagine me being on the street, and I'd done it a few times. I remember when I used to go to university, I'll be like this, itching, itching. I'll have to run into the bathroom, itch, 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 itch. Ah, I said, Lord, this is torment. And then I was presented with an option. The kingdom of God or myself. The lordship of Jesus or what I want to do. Change or continue in church with added torment and defeat. 
It's sad to say it took me years to get to that point. But it does not have to take you years to get to that point. Thank God I chose Jesus. I said, Lord, I'm putting this aside. Lord, no more indulging the flesh. For some of us, it may not be romance novels. It could be character issues, anger. For some people, they like how the anger makes them control because sometimes when with anger, when you do certain things, people who are non-confrontational, they retreat. And it gives you that feeling of control. For some people, it's lying, manipulation. For some people, it's laziness. For some people, God is calling you to sacrifice something. You don't want to give it up. You like how it's making you feel. Guess what? Satan is plying you the way he plied me. Because he's not, he's subtle, he's so smart. Remember, he's been here for millennia. So he's not just gonna rush in and you be like, oh, okay, say that. Oops, I should. No, he will ply you. It's like, you know, how many of us know the story of the frog? How do you boil a frog? You put it in water and you slowly what? Heat it up. He doesn't know until it's dead. I chose that. And that was the beginning of the kingdom of God at work in my life. By the grace of God, I have not looked back. He delivered me from itching. What the doctor said could not be done. He delivered me completely. He changed my story. He's still changing my story. And he can change yours too. But you have an option. He can change our city. You have an option. The kingdom of God or self. The kingdom of God or my flesh. For some of us, we fed the flesh so much, it's become so fat, the spirit can't even say anything. But you can cause correct. By the grace of God, I did. All God wants is for you to say, Lord, here am I. Help me. No more excuses. Another lie Satan can say is to, you have time. Ha <laughs> ha, biggest lie ever. You wake up 20 years from now and realize where has time gone? I mean, I look at myself now, I'm like, I'm in my 30s, wow. Like, remember when we were still in high school, 18 year olds, you know? I'm like, in my 30s, wow. That is what happens, time. Like this, in the blink of an eye, it's gone. You wake up, you are 80 years old. Wake up, 90 years old, and you realize you haven't done what God has put you here to do. You die, and you live with that reality forever. Going to heaven is not just, oh, I'm going to heaven, you know. <laughs> I'm just here, Lord. Yes, but imagine being faced with the reality that I have not done what God created me to do for millions and millions and millions of years. God gave Reverend Kenneth Hagin, Daddy has shared that um, many times and I'll share it because it really touched me. God told him, he said, 95% of Christians live and die without fulfilling God's plan for their lives. That is, 95% of Christians get born again and that's it, they don't grow, they don't crucify the flesh. They don't become Christ-like. They don't do what God has put them here to do. And they die and that's it. Two percent dance around it. They hear a message today. They're excited, Lord, but that flesh, oh, that flesh, that pet peeve. Oh, I like it. Oh, Lord, I like it. But the joy that is set before you is greater than any high your flesh can give you. And you know, another thing also, when you do what God is asking you to do, every other thing is added to it. The things you are looking for, struggling to do, 
is added to you. Grace is added to you. Strength is added to you. That was the kingdom of God at work in my life. And it's been a journey. I've made mistakes. But one thing the Lord has given me, which I'm so thankful to dad and mom for, for modeling, is a heart that is quick to repent. The kingdom of God and stubbornness don't go hand in hand. I remember a minister I listened to regularly. He said, when you feel that defiance rising up, who are you to tell me what to do? That is satanic. That is the fallen human nature. Pride. Maybe somebody is correcting you. Or sometimes when my husband is correcting me, <laughs> you know, if he's there, he's like, and so you feel that immediately. No, that is satanic. Because if God can speak to you through pastor or your husband, he can not talk to you. If you say, until God speaks to me, guess what? He's speaking to you. But you're not listening. And that is what results in the kingdom of God not being manifest in your life. The rulership, the dominion, the lordship, the reign not being manifest in your life. Please, I will enjoin you. I've been there. Now, the Lord took away the desire for those things. Now, they even irritate me. And he replaced it with his original desire. I read books now. Lots of Christian books. People who are close to me know I recommend books. Books that build up my faith. My husband knows sometimes 2 a.m. I'm reading. And guess what? I like it. I like being able to approach God's presence with confidence. I like being able to, at a point in time, pray and God shows up for me. I like it. I like being able to speak to sickness and disease and they leave. I like it when either my children, Israel or Bethel, a symptom shows up in their body and I say, I don't have to say, oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my sin. Okay, Lord, forgive me. Okay. Okay, Lord, forgive me. Please, Lord. No. I like being able to call on the name of Jesus and he shows up immediately. I like it. I like getting results. I like it when, when I was pregnant with Bethel and I had this, um, my leg used to freeze up. I, I researched a lot. So I went to read up on it. They said, oh, some, this medical condition. In the name of Jesus, and the thing disappeared. I like it when I was, I was laboring for Bethel. He came in 45 minutes. I like it. I like it. I like the Lord Jesus showing up for me. I like being able to stand in faith. It's not easy. I like the Lord Jesus. I'll call on his name. He shows up. I like when there's a need. My husband and I will stand together. We get results. I like it. And that was what Satan was trying to say. Oh, you know, enjoy the romance. Enjoy the romance novel. Why slowly cooking me like the frog? No. No. Young adults, rise up. Don't let Satan lie to you. Don't let Satan deceive you. Some of you, God has called you to do certain things. You keep giving excuses. Hey, time will go. And God will raise up somebody else to do what you are supposed to do. And guess what? No reward. Absolutely no reward. You think you have unlimited time? His mercy is there, but if you keep giving excuses and excuses and excuses, guess what? He'll find somebody else. Do you want to be replaced? No. The kingdom of God, the rulership of God, the reign of God. I like it when my husband looks at me and goes, wow, you know, you are growing. You don't used to react the way you used to react when we first got married. I like it. I like when my husband would say, oh, wow. You know, you don't get angry anymore as, as much as you used to. I like it. I like 
that. Those who are closest to you are the ones that will give you the true picture of who you are. And if you can say that about me, it shows I'm making progress. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The work you are running after. The PR you are running after. I'm sorry to pick on you this morning. He's my brother, so I'll give you cake, so all will be well. <laughs> you understand me. He was sharing his testimony. On student visa, he got his PR in six weeks. Who says you have to wait for years and years and years? Of course there is progress, but when you are in God, who says he cannot touch someone and turn their, touch their heart to favor you? But many times we play games. We play games with God. And God is looking at you because you, you, may be, you can deceive others, but you can't deceive God. The same way I was playing games with God. I was in worship team on Sunday. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But I'll get a hold. Oh, wow. No. Nah. No. Nobody sees, but God sees. Let's deal with God in sincerity. That's what, is, that's what God is after. A perfect heart. You make mistakes. But be quick to repent. Don't stay there and let Satan build a stronghold around you and keep you defeated because you are a threat to Satan. When you are transformed, you are a threat to him. And this city will be changed. This nation will be changed. The kingdom of God. Today I will continue building on what dad and mom have started on the nature and characteristic of the kingdom there's something called the law of first mention in scripture that is when something a topic or principle is mentioned for the first time it gives you the intent of the heart of god regarding that topic or theme it shows you what god meant when he said that word so who knows where the word kingdom of God or kingdom of the Lord was mentioned for the first time? Who knows? First Chronicles 28 verse 5. Let's go there. First Chronicles 28 verse 5 from the New King James Version. And all of my sons... For the Lord has given me many sons. This is David talking here. He has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. I want us to note the phrase, the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. The Lord there is Jesus. Anytime you see Lord in scripture, is referring to Jesus. He has chosen my son to sit on the throne on the, of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. What does a throne mean when you think of throne? What does it mean to you? Authority? What does a throne mean? Who sits on a throne? A king. What do they do on the throne? They rule. So the throne of the kingdom of the Lord talks about Jesus enthroned in our lives. Because another word for kingdom is what? Who remembers? What's another word or other the syn under synonyms for kingdom? Authority, dominion, lordship, rulership all symbolizing throne the throne of the kingdom of the lord over israel jesus sitting on the throne in your life is jesus sitting on the throne of his kingdom in your life or you are sitting on the throne i'm not talking about being born again here born again is like starting kindergarten you know all of us here went to kindergarten but how many of us, well, apart from the babies, how many of us here are still in kindergarten? What did we do? We grew. We advanced. We matured. 
So being born again is just coming into key. Entering kinder is the start. There's excitement. I think there is joy in heaven over every sinner that repents. We are happy. We are joyful. But what is God's expectation? Growth. Advancement. I will share on the nature of the kingdom. And from 1 Chronicles 28, we will see the intent of God regarding his kingdom in our lives. The nature of the kingdom. Verse 6, now he said to me, it is your son Solomon who shall build my house and my court. For I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he is steadfast to obey, to observe my commandments and my judgments as it is this day. Now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord and in the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God that you may possess this good land and live it as an inheritance for your children after you forever. Number one, the kingdom of God perpetuates. We see it in verse 8, that you may possess this good land, the plan and purpose for your life, you fulfill it. And it doesn't end there. And live it, faith, as an inheritance for your children after you forever. The kingdom of God perpetuates. When Jesus is enthroned in your life, he will ensure your children carry on faith. Not religion, true faith. The kingdom of God perpetuates. So many of us, our children, and like me as well, we love our children so much. We want them to do well. We want them to serve the Lord. We want them to be on fire for the Lord. The answer is the kingdom. The Lordship of Jesus. Jesus being enthroned in your life. Because spiritual things, many times they are not thought, they are caught. How did I learn to pray? Watching my parents pray. How did I learn to study my Bible? Seeing my parents study the Bible. How did I learn that Jesus is number one? Seeing my parents sacrifice other things to follow Jesus. You can't give what you don't have. Sometimes, you know, uh, on, depending on your background, we've been raised up in that deceptive mode. Do as I say, not as I do. Somebody told me something. I can't remember. He said, before I got married, he said, whatever you don't want your children to pick up, break it in your life. If you don't want your children to pick up certain habits you have that you don't like, break it in your life. Because they will pick it. The kingdom of God perpetuates. He is the God of Abraham. Of who? The God of Isaac. And the God of who? He is the God of Lois. The God of Eunice. And the God of Timothy. What is that saying? The kingdom of God is transgenerational. Number two. We will jump to verse 11. First Chronicles 28 verse 11. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the vestibule. Its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat. And the plans for all that he had by the Spirit. Look at it. He gave his son Solomon the plans for the, the vestibule. Verse 12, and the plans for all he had by the Spirit. The kingdom of God, the Lordship of Jesus in your life, and I'm not talking about giving your heart to Christ. I'm talking about you submitting to the Lordship of Jesus. You submitting to his word. You being under the authority of, the, uh, of his word. You being under the dominion of the Lord Jesus. 
It will bring to your life the plans and purposes of God. We've all said this, I don't know what to do. I don't know, like, what's, you know, what's, what's going on? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. The answer to that is the kingdom. David gave his son Solomon the plans, verse 12, and the plans for all that he had. The lordship of Jesus will give you his plans for your life. The Bible says those who walk after him will not walk, those who follow after him will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Let's go to John 8 verse 12. We will know his plans for our lives by the kingdom. I remember, um, this was a few days ago, and my husband can confirm this. We had to make a decision, and we were both praying about it. And we, this, we were sh like discussing it, and he said, this is what I believe God told me. And it was the exact same thing the Lord told me to. Look at that. His spirit bearing witness with our spirit. That is the kingdom. Why will God tell you something when you have not done the 99 other things he's told you? No. Doesn't work like that. Let's go to John 8, 12. It says, then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the what? Let's see it in the message translation. The message translation. John 8, 12. The message translation says, Jesus once again addressed them. I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in darkness. So you don't hit a ditch and go, oops, Lord help me. You know, God is so merciful. He's such a father. Sometimes we get ourselves, and I've done it, we get ourselves into problems, and you now say, oh, Lord, come and deliver me from this problem. And he delivers you. But if you keep doing that, fall into a ditch, Lord, help me, he delivers you. Will you ever go forward? No. No one who follows me, who has made me their Lord, who is under my authority, who is under my lordship, who is under my dominion, stumbles around in the darkness. Darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. So just like 1 Chronicles 28 verse 12, he will reveal to you by his spirit, his plans, all his plans. He will not keep anything hidden from you. I remember an experience when I was growing up, I this was when I was in high school. I was driving in the car and I was just, I was thinking about some, something I can't remember now. And I was just asking a question in my heart, thinking about that thing. And immediately, daddy answered. He was the one driving me. He answered. He answered that question in my heart. How did you know what I was thinking? That is the kingdom. Because he submitted to the lordship of Jesus, God can use him to answer situations in my life. I read about um, this woman, Terry Copeland Pearson. Her young boy was kissing girls in school. She had no idea. She went out ministering. You know, you're probably, I don't know, a six-year-old. Probably you saw mom and dad kissing. I was like, okay, this looks good. Let me try it on all the girls in school. <laughs> and he was a very smart boy. Of course, he didn't do it in front of the teachers. You know, in the playground, nobody... <laughs> he, he, he went around kissing the girls. Okay, this feels good. And then next time, he, he had been doing it for a while. So he was a bit aware. So he was not like a three-year-old, like um, six or seven. So he kind of had, a, have an, he had an idea of what he was doing. And mom was traveling a lot, so... And his mom is a woman of prayer. So she got home one day and the Holy Spirit said to her, your son has been kissing girls. And she called him. He said, are you kissing? I think his name is Jeremy. Jeremy, have you been kissing girls? No, mom. The Holy Spirit told me you've been kissing girls. 
Yes, mom. That boy knew that he couldn't hide anything. <laughs> I mean, when you have a parent like that, you know some things you can't do <laughs> because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to them. I want to be that parent. Why? Because it makes God real to my children. You can't take away those experiences because they see the reality of God. Not doing church on Sunday and living life in the week like the world. When we are under the authority of Jesus, when Jesus is enthroned in our life, when he is enthroned, when we are in the kingdom of God, we will not stumble around in darkness. And this light brings every good thing into our life. Is it the money you're after? The whatever it is that you're after, he brings it into your life. He brings it into your life. Let's go to John 10 verse 10. Let's read it in the easy to read version. It says, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came to give life, life that is full and good. The TPT version says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy, but I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, Life in its fullness until you overflow. That is the answer to what you're seeking. By that time, those things don't really matter to you anymore. Because you have the treasure that is above all treasures. He will bring to you every good thing that you desire in your life. You see, the marriage of your dreams, he will give it to you. Some of us, we want to get married, but the way we are now, we would destroy any marriage. We are full of pride. We are not prayerful. This is applying to both men and women, so don't think I'm just talking to women. We can't say sorry. We are full of culture. When the kingdom of God is at work in your life, he makes you the best person to live with. You become easy to get along with. Why? Because you are under the rulership of Jesus. You are in his kingdom. Number three, an understanding of the kingdom will bring wealth and riches to you. Let's go back to 1 Chronicles 28. So verse 14, he gave gold by weight of gold for things of gold, for all articles used in every kind of service. Also silver for all articles of silver, silver by weight. For all articles used in every kind of service. The weight of the lampstand of gold. If you jump to 29 verses 2. First Chronicles 29 verse 2. He says, now for the house of my God. In the New Testament, who is the house of God? We are the house of God. We are the temple of the living God. I have prepared with all my might things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, and so on and so on. Verse 3, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. You will have abundance. You won't lack resources. You won't lack what you need to get things done. He will show you what to do. He will open doors for you. How many of us remember that story dad read months ago about, um, is it George Washington, the inventor in Alabama, who God showed, was it 300 uses of peanuts? that transformed the economy of Alabama, adding billions of dollars to the economy. He was a scientist, but he had a practice. He used to wake up at 4 a.m. to spend time with the Lord. As he grew in it, because those things don't happen overnight. How many of us know I can't build relationship with you overnight? It takes time. It takes time. As we build it, God will begin to show you what to do. 
When others don't know what to do, when there's lack, he will give you ideas that will produce resources. But some of us want the ideas now. Can I give my son Israel, if I had two million dollars, can I give it to him now? When he's, no, he needs to mature. That maturity involves, you know, being potty trained. Involves going to bed when he needs to. It involves obedience. It involves, you know, correcting wrong habits. As he's growing, what is that showing? That he can be what? Trusted. And then God shows you, gives you ideas. But some of us want it now. I've prayed, I, I woke up at 5 a.m. for two weeks. Lord, give me all the answers now. If you have only known me for two weeks, can you trust me? Can you trust me? Two weeks. Oh, okay, let's add it. If you've only known me for two months, can you trust me with your investment? If I come to you, ah, I have this, um, I want to call it Ponzi scheme. I won't call it Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I have this, um, this business. You give me 200,000, you get 2 million. I've, gi- I've proven it for 2,000 clients. Just trust me. You've only known me for two months. Will you give me that? Why do we now expect we've not developed our relationship with the Lord for God to reveal everything, open up his treasuries and give it to you? No relationship. No track record. He's give, he's tried to prove you, taking you through tests. We failed again and again and again. If I'm flying an air, if you're flying an airplane and the pilot announces, well, I just graduated from, um, pilot school. I've never flown an airplane before. There's no co-pilot here. So please join your faith with me and believe that we arrive at destination. Will you go on that plane? I mean, I've just graduated from, I mean, I graduated first in my class. I've done this, I've flown simulation airplanes, but not the real one. Will you trust me? Why do we not expect God to trust us with the treasure of his kingdom? He gives us small tests, we fail. But he's such a father, he will keep giving you an opportunity again and again and again and again. If you keep failing, 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 do you think he will trust you with his treasures? No. It still boils down many times. For believers, there's satanic attack, but Satan is defeated. Many times it's our flesh. We, we like our pet things. But Satan lies. Oh, you know, if you give this up, something, you, you know, you won't enjoy it. No, it's a lie. It's a lie. The kingdom of God will bring wealth and riches in abundance to you. Let's read it, um, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 3 in the CJB, Complete Jewish Bible. It says, in addition, I'm reading from verse 3. In addition, because my desire is set on the house of my God, since I have my own supply of gold and silver, I herewith give it to the house of the Lord over and above everything I have prepared for the holy house. Verse 2, going up, now I have used all my strength to prepare for the house of my God the gold needed for the articles of gold, the silver for the articles of silver, the bronze for the articles of bronze. So they had abundance. They had abundance. God will test you in little because he who is faithful in little is faithful in much. He will test you in little. In little. When he sees you are faithful, he will give you more. That is how God works. That is how we do as well. In our workplace, the, if I just join, let's say I join NAB, would they immediately take me to CEO? No. I start at Teller, our customer. You know, now it's not Teller anymore. It's, you know, customer service representative. You, know, you have to package it well. <laughs> Everybody has a touch title. <laughs> Nobody is just Teller. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> we don't take somebody who has just joined to CEO. We put them through process. We test them. We add responsibility. When they excel, what do we do? We give them more. We give them more. We give them more until they get to the top. Same thing in the kingdom of God. 
Number four, the lordship of Jesus his, is the answer. His rulership is the answer to every question life brings our way. A preacher usually says, and I found that to be true, the answer to a million and one question is to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to 1 Chronicles 28 verse 9. He says, as for you, my son, Solomon. So God is talking to me. As for me, Ibukun, know the God of your father. Revelation. Know him and serve him with a loyal heart. The word loyal is reliable. Are we dependable? Are we reliable? Are we always true? If we say we will do something, is it an exception if we don't? Or if we say we will do something, there are some people that, you know, when they tell you they do something, you're 90% sure they're not going to do it. You don't believe them anyway. Are you faithful? And it's not easy. I learned, I'm still learning that from my husband. Sometimes, there was one time he wanted to, he was so tired, he had not slept, and then he went to do, to do an arrangement, and he had given somebody an appointment for this time, and he was tired. And he said to me, he said, ah, I've given this person my word. I can't go back on it. And he did it. So being reliable is not a matter of feeling like it. But what has that done for me? Confidence. Dad thought us. He said, when you are a person that keeps your word, I know there are times things come up and it's understandable where you can't. But if it's a practice, it's impossible to believe God's word. I've told people before, have faith in God, have faith in God. But because of Bibles, I'm learning, you know what? The issue is not even have faith in God. The issue is get to know God. <laughs> Get to know God because you can't have faith in someone you don't know. Are you loyal? When I'm loyal, then it's easy for me to trust that God is loyal. When I keep my word, it's easy for me to trust that God will keep his word. Because... I've trained myself, and that is where dying to the flesh comes in. You are training yourself in God-like character so that you don't struggle to trust God. You're not in church or when pastor, mommy speak to you, you say, yes, yes, and you go home and those thoughts come and all the faith has flown out the window. You are saying something, like we're learning in Bible study, Faith is of the heart. It's not just, um, you know, hard-headedness. Yes, I know God can do it. I know. But in your heart, you're already making plan B. No, that's not faith. Faith is a, is a heart conviction. You know. You can stake your life on it that God will show up. That is faith. And that comes through training. It's the answer to every question. When you don't know what to do, you go to the Lord, you pray, and he shows up for you. Oh, I love that. He, when he shows up for you. When he shows up for you. Some of us can testify of that. When you reach the end and you are hanging on and you're like, Lord, if you don't show up and he shows up, that does something to your faith. When you say something and it doesn't come to pass, it hurts your faith. And some of us, we become so used to, we, we are perfect Christian. Oh, God will do it. God, there's no faith at all religious talk and that is what the world sees and they say I don't want anything to do with this is the answer his lordship is the answer to every question every question that life throws at us number five the kingdom of God is supernatural what is the supernatural the super of God that he has taught us coming upon our natural to be able to do what we cannot do on our own. Do we struggle in certain areas? Daddy has told us many times, all you need is grace. 
Verse 10, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 10. If you seek him, he will be found by you. Look at that. He said, he didn't say if you seek him, he may be. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. When you seek him with a loyal heart, he will be found. He's the father. I want us to know God is not like our natural. Some of us don't have um, good examples in our natural father. And that's sad. But God is not our natural father. He's far better than any father you can imagine. Verse 10. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and what? Do it. That's my favorite word. Do it. Be strong and do it. That is the supernatural. Be strong and do it. That is the empowerment of God. Every time God has called you to do certain things, anytime God has called, even in scripture, anything that anybody ever did for God, he empowered them to do it. So why do you think what God has called you to do, you do it in your own strength? It's not possible. Is it to serve? It's not in your own strength. You get tired. You get weary. Sometimes situations happen that want to bring discouragement. But because you are in God, you encourage yourself in God and keep on. His supernatural strengthens you. We see this in David and Goliath. David, a 17-year-old boy, facing Goliath, a man of war that has had years of experience. David, a novice. But one thing David did not do, he didn't run back. And one thing God is asking us to do, don't run back. He can't release grace when you pull back. You can't be on your bed and say, Lord, if you move me from this bed, I will do it. No. <laughs> no. I remember when I used to um, do, I used to um, facil facilitate, sorry, a, a meeting at sometimes 3 a.m., 4 a.m., Sunday every month. Oh, there were times I would have gone to bed at 11 and I have to get, get up at 2 a.m. Oh, wow. Those were not easy times. But I didn't lie on bed and say, Lord, just, you know, push me out of this bed. No, I dragged myself out and his grace took over. Of course, afterwards, you know, and the funny thing is, or the interesting thing is, throughout the service, I will be strong. But when I get home, my body <laughs> gets tired and I have to rest. But that trained me. When you need his grace, raise up your hand and go, Lord, I'm taking that step. And his grace comes. He won't force you. He won't push you out of bed, Lord, until you, no, no. You release your hand, he releases grace. The kingdom of God, the rulership of God is supernatural. I mean, how will others know that we are believers when they cannot see the grace of God at work in your life? When people ask you, how do you do it? You can say, it's the grace of God. How are you able to do this, do this? It's the grace of God. His grace has helped me. His grace, his strength is made perfect in my weaknesses. How are you able to overcome this situation? The grace of God. But all God is asking is to take that step forward. If you are willing and what? Take that step forward. It didn't say if you sit down there and wait. You take that step of obedience and his super comes upon your natural. Moses in the burning bush, she was a stammerer. What did God say? Go. As he went, the grace of God took over. He didn't stay there and say, God, until you cure me of my stammering, I will go. No. As he, he went, grace took over. The kingdom, the lordship, the throne of Jesus in our life is supernatural. That is what makes Christianity sweet. 
is what makes you know when you know that ah you just you, you can't wait for God to show up because you know he will show up question who sits on the throne in your life I'm not asking are you born again who sits is the kingdom of God at work in your life what do I mean who is in charge of your decisions can the Lord say don't do this and you fall back and say Lord I don't understand I may not like this but I will do it and you say well God hasn't told me that well he's spoken to you through pastor he speaks to you sometimes through your husband or your wife if you can't listen to them you can't listen to God let's go to Romans 10 verse 14 and I'll end there let's read it in the amplified classic the title in the new King James says what is the title please make eye contact with the word open your Bibles what is the title Israel rejects the gospel look at it in the amplified classic verse 14 let's go there but how are people to call upon him whom they have not believed in whom they have no faith on whom they have no reliance and how are they to believe in him adhere to or trust and rely on, on him of whom they have never heard and how are they to hear without a what preacher that is not just talking about someone called to the fivefold ministry that is someone telling you maybe counseling you God is speaking through that person at that instant that person is a preacher how would they hear without a preacher how will they hear without a preacher the kingdom of God is at hand God is ready and willing to pour his super on your natural he's ready and willing to answer every question you have he's ready and willing to turn your situation around he's ready and willing to ensure that your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren are in God not just in church in Christ but is he Lord in your life is the kingdom of God at work in your life is his lordship dominion authority rulership kingship at work in your life are you submitted under his word that is the condition if you are willing to embark on that journey and not give excuses like me the way I did with the romance novels and suffer the consequence of it he's ready and it's the most exciting life you ever live no, in hindsight I can look back and say honestly nothing compares to it nothing compares to it take that step of faith this morning allow his lordship in your life put your will under his word choose to die to the flesh and it's a journey have a heart of repentance don't be stubborn and you see God use you as a display of himself in Jesus name amen, amen. praise God hallelujah. hallelujah let's pray and bow our heads and just talk to the Lord this morning let's release our faith and receive the word into our hearts ask the Lord to help you to come under his rulership his kingship his reign there's way 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 more to you than who you are now as long as you choose to walk with him to allow his kingdom manifest in your life to allow the throne of Jesus to be established above all else in your life to vacate the throne 
and allow Jesus and his word to be enthroned in your life. It's an exciting life. It's an amazing life. It's a life of victory, of challenges, but victory, of growth, knowing God as your father. What a journey. What a life. And many will be attracted to that. Many will see the goodness of God and want to be a part of that. But there's a price to pay. But the price is not more than his grace. Lean on grace. He's willing and he's ready. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.